Hello everybody and welcome to the Night Garden. I am Vamp, or Vampire Antihero, the owner of Conquer Thy Fear Studio, and here is a new time lapse for you all. I figured that I would do this one a little bit differently than my previous speed paints that I've shared here just because I wanted to start getting into tutorials and stuff like that. So uh, this is my first attempt at doing something with a voiceover and I hope that you enjoy watching. I'll be talking a little bit about my process as I have the uh, video playing on the screen. Okay, so first things first is I am starting with a sketch. Um, I started out a little bit more in depth than I typically want to with something like this, just because I was working on um, I was working off of a reference for my initial building shape. Um, don't be afraid to use references. The idea is not to copy what you are seeing. It's just to have something to look at so that you keep track of the direction. Because often when you are working on something that is a little bit more in depth, it's hard to keep track of the little details that you want to put in. So like I knew when I started this that I wanted to draw something that was dedicated to vampires. Um, I am a very big vampire fan. I work on a lot of uh, a lot of like supernatural mystery type stuff in my personal work. Um, but like a lot of that is not published or out to the public. I'm working on getting that stuff out. So this is actually a concept piece for one of the buildings in one of my comics that uh, should hopefully be in the works soon. Um, but you can see here what I did was I started with that side part. I changed it to green because that's typically what I sketch in. That right part I actually turned into um, basic shapes and then I started sketching my, my more in-depth stuff on top of that. That's how I typically started drawing this in depth because it's a lot easier for me to picture the basic shapes than it is to picture the details going into the basic shapes. So I hope that that makes sense. But uh, that being said, uh, you'll see me switch my, uh, my background color in a little bit just uh, to a tonal gray. Typically I don't work on this bright white because it hurts my eyes. It's very, very hard to keep track of um, what I'm doing if my eyes start getting tired. But these bright colors that I'm sketching in make it so that I work a little bit faster. Uh, there's that flash. Then you'll see uh, this roof that I drew um, is going to get copied and moved up. The reason why I did that is because copying pieces of your drawing that you enjoy that are already put together well is just an easy shortcut to make something this in depth. Like, if you have something that you know has a ton of uh, work going into it, a ton of patterning, a ton of repeating elements, then just copy the parts that you enjoy. It's a good way to kind of get that shortcut so that you're making sure that everything is kind of uniform and that you're happy with how it looks. Um, but I'm just going to let this run for a little bit and then we are going to... Um, I'll start talking again once I get to my inking. So enjoy the process. Okay, so right here, actually I'm going to mention I switched my, my color to gray because this is a little bit easier to look at after my sketch is done. So that's why I did that. Um, but we're still sketching here. Um, I also kind of did that because I was streaming at this point and I felt like the green was a little bit hard to look at for people who might have been watching. So I just kind of went, you know what? I'll switch to the gray. I'm almost done with this sketch and we will, you know, just just do this this way. Um, but yeah, back to the process. Thank you. 
something that I'm not very confident in my artwork right now is actually my um, figures. So you'll see me redo this figure a lot. Um, it's a lot easier to draw your background first and add your figure second so that you can figure out how your figures are placed in the environment you've made. But like just something in general that I'm not very happy with with my artwork is my um, how my figures look. I want to kind of stylize them a little bit more. I spent a long time kind of stuck in this like mix of comic realism and cartoon and like my artwork doesn't know which direction to push so I'm kind of working on fixing that right now. I'm trying to like I can do distinctly cartoon, I can do distinctly realistic, but like when I just kind of draw to draw, my figures kind of look weird, and I want to kind of push them one way or another. So that's something that I'm working on in my current artwork. I wish I had been showing my um, workspace as opposed to doing this time-lapse method uh, just because you cannot tell how much I'm zooming in and out here. Um, I was not working at this small. I was working pretty zoomed in at this point just to make sure that I had you know, a good handle on how my, my figure was looking, how my details were falling. So like, definitely don't be afraid to zoom in and out. Um, as somebody who started with a 2D uh, traditional style, um, it's something that I almost never did when I first started drawing uh, digitally, and I kind of suffered for it. Like, I feel like I get a lot more detail in my digital work now that I don't uh, hesitate to zoom in as much. But that can also be a double-edged sword because I could put way too much detail into a part that you just will not see it if it is a print or a traditional uh, medium. So like, don't be afraid to zoom in, but also don't be afraid to, you know, kind of step back and look at it as a whole either. Um, so this is where I started inking. You can see that I'm working with a very small brush in the background here uh, by the um, by the the back uh, kind of tree embellishment that I added and now I'm working on the um, the figure in the uh, the little outcropping. Um, a lot of what I do when I get that far out in a scene, is I just kind of break my my figures and stuff down to a um, a set of of shapes, kind of like how I did my my sketches, um, just so that I can kind of show okay, this is where the light is hitting, this is where the dark is hitting, and not really need to be overwhelmed by the shadowing and you know coloring process uh, later on. So that's what I'm doing there now. Um, you'll see a lot of me just kind of hopping around the canvas because I get bored of working on certain things and then I'll be like, well, I want to keep interested in this piece overall, so let me hop to this next part. And then, you know, I'll be bored of that part and then I'll go to the next part and so on and so forth until the inking is done. So that's what's going on here. Um, I'll shut up now. You can, uh, you can keep watching the... Uh, process for you.
So about here is where I'm pretty much finished. You can tell that I was pretty pretty done with the uh, artwork by this point uh, just because of how much I was filling things in and, and stuff like that. So like I was trying to kind of rush through the last bit of the uh, inking process there, but then I got to color. And color is one of my favorite things to do. It's one of the things that I'm least confident in, but it's the thing that I enjoy the most. 
so like this is this is where I uh, I really get to play around and experiment. My my line art tends to be very rigid, and I don't like to deviate much from my sketches. So like this is where I really get to play. Um, I usually start with pretty bright saturated colors, and then I dull down as I as I color. Um, I like adding a lot of texture to my pieces, so you'll see me use a lot of different textured brushes. Um, I use the gouache blender a lot that is added into uh, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, I've used a lot of different um, a lot of different programs, but Clip Studio Paint is absolutely my favorite. Um, but this is a night scene. So you can see I'm using a purple to shade. I usually use purple a lot to shade just because I like the kind of tension that it causes in a lot of different colors. Um, but usually, you know, blues also make a very good shade color um, and indigos. So I kind of stick between those three colors on the color wheel and just kind of move in between. Uh, but purples always work the best for, for uh, nighttime. And you'll just see that I put a purple wash over everything just to kind of really make it fade back um, and then I'm playing around with adding a, a couple of light effects and stuff like that. Uh, there's usually not a lot of shading that you need to do in a night scene because everything is pretty much in the dark unless you have something harshly illuminated like that uh, doorway behind the one figure. Um, so night scenes are usually a lot more easy to do for me than like harsh daylight and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the end. I hope that you enjoy. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, if you like my artwork, I do sell merchandise over on my website. That's conquerthyfear.com. Um, I also am live four nights a week on Twitch under Vampire Antihero. Sundays and Mondays are artwork, Wednesdays and Saturdays are gaming. Um, also I would like to take a moment to thank my coffee supporters. I blog on coffee and also take donations and have a monthly fan club on coffee. Uh, you guys keep me going. I could not keep doing content creation without you guys, so I would like to take a minute to thank lovely Rosie T and life is great. You guys are wonderful. I appreciate each and everything that you guys do for me, and I love each and every one of you who have taken the time to watch this today. So uh, I will be back soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.